Welcome aboard here to the Sports Talk Nation. We are back here on the Sports Talk Nation, and we're back talking about some local football here uh, in the Tri-State area. This video, now I know that we've been doing throughout the course of this year weekly recaps, but let's be honest at this point of the year, especially when it comes to the Jets and the Giants, it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, I know the Giants have gotten a little bit better of late, won some games. We'll get into them in a minute, but the big story that we got to talk about today on this video is in regards to the future of the New York Jets because... Adam Gase, Sam Darnold, and Trevor Lawrence all intertwined in what may be the future of this franchise or lack thereof. Now, the Jets right now sitting at 0-11. They're an uncompetitive football team. They go out there, they lose again. What a shock. 20-3 to the Miami Dolphins. And two games to the Dolphins this year have lost by a combined score of 44-3. to Yeah. So this team that has gone absolutely nowhere, a team that looks destined for 0-16, and I could come here every week and give you weekly recaps about another loss. What's the point? Because every single time you do that, it's going to be basically the same video over and over and over again. Just watch. I want him fired. I want him fired now. I want him fired right now. I want him fired. I want him fired today. I'm tired of this. Enough is enough. Fire, Gase. Fire against! Fire against! When is he gonna get fired? When is he gonna get fired? You see what I mean? You see what I mean? You don't need to. Be, there's no reason to keep talking about like how the Jets lost this game or why this, why the Jets are in the situation. And they are what they are. They're a bad football team at 0 11, and they're going nowhere. The question right now for the Jets isn't about whether they're going to how they're going to do against the Raiders this week. It isn't about how they're going to do against the Seahawks and the Rams the next couple of weeks after that, because we all know they're probably going to be losses for that matter. The question is, what is going to happen with Adam Gase? When is it going to happen? When is it going to happen with, what's going to happen with Sam Darnold? And what's the deal with Trevor Lawrence? Is he going to be the Jets franchise quarterback moving forward in next year's draft? That's the only questions that are left for the Jets at this point. It all really starts with, of course, Adam Gase, who has not been fired at this point in the year. You take a look around the NFL, you see a number of coaches who have been fired. We know with Dan Quinn with the Atlanta Falcons. We know with Mike, Matt Patricia in Detroit with the Lions. Bill O'Brien with the Texans. Those guys have all been fired. Of course, Quinn and O'Brien fired very early, early in the year. And Patricia fired after the Thanksgiving Day loss that Detroit had to the Texans. So what gives with Adam Gates? And that's really the, the story that's been out there for the last couple of days since the Jets lost to Miami. And you see everybody putting out articles out there about what's the deal with Gates. Why hasn't he been fired now? And the fact is, at this point, as I said, we could sit here and talk about every week why he has not been fired. The fact is, he is going to get fired at some point soon. Whether it happens this week whether it happens a week from now, whether it happens five weeks from now, Adam Gase is going to be gone. Whether the Jets are 1-15 or 0-16, at that point, considering Gase's future, somewhat irrelevant. The only way that you're going to see Jet fans' heads explode is if the Johnson brothers do the unthinkable, or maybe not, so, maybe not unthinkable because you consider it's the Johnson brothers, and decide that Adam Gase, for some whatever reason, deserves another shot. I don't see that happening, but hey, anything is possible. And if you take a look at the take a look at the fact that the Johnson Johnsons have a history of being very patient owners. Remember, they gave Rex Ryan and John Idzik. They tried to make that marriage work for two years. That was a mistake. It shouldn't have happened. Uh, they you can make the argument they kept Ryan two years too long at that point. You could even make the argument that, uh, you know, with Todd Bowles and Mike McCagnan, how they messed that up, firing Todd Bowles and keeping Mike McCagnan when they should have both fired both of them at the same time, that was, as we, as we know, a complete disaster. How can you trust the Johnsons what they're going to do? Not to mention Woody coming back soon from the United Kingdom after serving as the ambassador over there and say what you will about the controversies that he's had over there, for that matter, with Woody Johnson. 
But what really disturbed me was the fact that I read this in the in Richard Semini's column of ESPN, saying that Gates has developed close relationships with Christopher Johnson and team president Jaime Alaya. I'll pronounce that correct. In order to have some friends in the organization, as they say in uh, <laughs> in movies. But um, that's what's got to scare you the most of all, is what are the Johnsons going to do with Adam Gase when this is all said and done? Because there is no reason, none whatsoever, for Adam Gase to keep this job. This team is 32nd in the league in total offense, 32nd in the league in pass offense, 32nd in the league in points po scored per game with 13 points per game. Sam Donald's career has completely fallen apart. We'll get into whether, you know, Donald should shoulder some of the blame, which he probably should certainly for Sunday's performance with the big interception that he had. Obviously, that didn't help. But um, a couple of big interceptions that he had certainly didn't help. But he has destroyed Sam Donald's confidence and has pretty much put him in a position, the quarterback in a position, and the franchise in a position where both need to now move on. Sam Darnold's career, and I, I, this is what's so hard for me to believe, is that if you told me two years ago when Darnold was playing well, his rookie year, uh, under Tom Bowles, of all, of all people, that in two, uh, two years later would be the end of Sam Darnold's stay with the Jets, I wouldn't have believed you. But that's the case here because Adam Gase has helped destroy that kid's career here in New York. It happened in Miami, obviously, with Ryan Tannehill. Look what Tannehill did when he got away with, from Adam Gase. He now gets the turnaround, hand the ball off to Derrick Henry, and the rest is history over down, down there in Tennessee with the Titans. So who's to say that Sam Darnold can't have success elsewhere? He probably can. He's a good quarterback. He's got talent. I would hate to see the Jets give up on a kid like this who still has something there. It's not like we're, well, this is Geno Smith here. It's not like it's Mark Sanchez uh, when things fell apart for him, but it's getting pretty damn close. Right now with Sam Darnold. And the thing that's worries you about Darnold, the interceptions, obviously. The inaccuracy has been a problem. Hasn't thrown a touchdown pass. And I know he's gotten in, got highly injured. We'll get into that in a second. Hasn't thrown a touchdown pass. It's what, week three of this year? There's things that are alarming from Darnold's performances. So he doesn't get a full... Uh, he's not totally blameless here. Not to mention he has developed a, a, a trait of being a guy who, can get, who does not stay healthy for a full season... Each of his three years, he's missed at least three games of those years. And of course, last year being the situation with minor nucleosis. But be that as it may, the question now with the Jets is, what is going to happen moving forward? If Gase gets fired, what does that mean for the quarterback? Does Joe Douglas, who we know will be here, he's not going anywhere. Does Joe Douglas find a coach who can make it work with Darnold? Or... Does he bring in a new coach who wants to go out there and get Trevor Lawrence? Keep in mind, there is $25 million involved here. And that is the salary that is in Donald's rookie salary that has to be picked up for his fifth-year option of $25 million. Do the Jets really want to pick that up? Right now, you would have to imagine they do not. So at that point, you have to sit there and say, "Do we? Or, or, if you're Joe Douglas, are we better off moving on from Donald, trading him, I know people have been running around saying the Jets could get a first-round pick. You're not getting a first-round pick for Sam Darnold right now. Maybe you get a second-round pick, most likely a third, but maybe more, maybe like a second or third-round pick. You're not getting a first-round pick for Sam Darnold coming off of the performances he's had so far this year and also the injuries. It's not going to happen. So maybe you get a second-round pick, maybe you get a third-round pick for him, and you go out there and you go out and try to get a Trevor Lawrence. And the key here is... Do the can the Jets be attractive enough to get Lawrence to commit here? Now, it sounds like he's going to come out of college. They had him as part of their senior day festivities down there in Clemson. Uh, Trevor Lawrence did put out a, a video thanking the fans down there as well for all their support over the last few years. And it sounds like he may come out. Now, it doesn't mean he will. Remember back in October, he said that it was a decision that he still had to make, whether he would stay another year or commit to going to the NFL draft, so we still don't know yet. But if he did come out, and as everyone has tried to speculate, saying if Trevor Lawrence comes out, he should do everything he can in his power to avoid the New York Jets. And I can certainly understand why we see what this organization has done to quarterbacks from Darnold, Sanchez, Geno Smith. They have not had any success with rookie quarterbacks, run quarterbacks. And a lot of them they, they've ended up destroying here in town. 
A lot of issues with obviously the front office over the years. A lot of issues with the coaching coaching over the years. There's a lot not to like about the Jets, for that matter, if you are a rookie quarterback, especially one of the ilk of a Trevor Lawrence who has won a national title, who has been a, a, a uh, one of the best players in college football over the last three years, Heisman Trophy candidate this year again, uh, even in spite of the fact that he was diagnosed with COVID at one point. So what what do you do if you're Trevor Lawrence? Do you, if let's just say the, let's just say, God forbid that Adam Gase is still here. I can't imagine Trevor Lawrence wanting to be a part of that. And let's just say if Gase is not here, let's say it's a Jim Harbaugh or a Matt Campbell or even an Eric Bieniemy. I don't think Bieniemy's coming here to the Jets, but if that were the case, if he were the coach, would Lawrence then say, you know what, maybe, maybe I want to try out New York. Who knows? Maybe he wants to come to New York anyway. I don't know. We don't know whether he'll try to force a trade or not, but it's certainly part of the storylines going forward for this franchise. So, yes, I, we could sit here blue to, the, blue to our face saying, when are the Jets going to fire Aaron Gase? What's going to happen with Sam Darnold? The fact is we have five games left in this season. The Jets play the Raiders, the Seahawks, the Rams, the Browns, and the Patriots. All these teams have a shot, even the Patriots at 5-6, and six, at going to the postseason. The Jets are not winning any of these games. If they find a way to win one, that's going to be about it. 0-16 is coming. Ride the wave, and then in five weeks' time, hopefully at that point, the Johnsons do the right thing and fire Adam Gase, and then we can get, begin to start to see where this thing is going. But if the Jets do get the number one pick, it'll be very interesting to see whether Trevor Lawrence does indeed want to come out. I think that the Jets at this point, half for the betterment of Sam Darnold and his point in his career, should move him out. I think he'll do fine somewhere else. I think it's time for a change of scenery for him. And it's time to see if they can get this kid from Clemson, if that turns out to be the right move. Now, as far as the Giants uh, are concerned, let just flip over to them because there are good news, bad news with guarding, uh, regarding Big Blue right now. The good news being the fact that the Giants right now find themselves in first place. 19-17 win over the Cincinnati Bengals the other day. And, of course, the Eagles losing on Monday night certainly helps a lot as well. As the Giants sit there at 4-7, and seven, tied with the Washington football team. Hard to believe the Giants are in this position, but they are. But the bad news is they go to Seattle. And on top of that, Daniel Jones is hurt after the hamstring strain that he suffered against the Bengals. So he will miss at least, at least one week. Uh, that's this week against Seattle. And Colt McCoy will get the start. Let's be honest. Playing the Seahawks this week in Seattle. And I know there's no fans in the buildings this year because of COVID. Playing the Seahawks in Seattle is not an easy task. Seattle looked good last night. Defense looked better than they did, uh, as they have all season, I understand. They've had issues with, with, that, with their defense there, but I think this was, would have been a tough ask. Even if the Giants were 100% healthy going into this game, it would have been tough to go into Seattle and get a win. So the Giants are probably going to lose this game in Seattle, get the 4-8, and, and we'll go from there. Whether the Giants can find a way to win three or two of their final four games, they play the Browns, Ravens, uh, Cowboys, and I, I know I missed one right there, Cardinals, sorry about that, in, in their final four games, three of those games will be at home, the only they do visit Baltimore week 16, if they can win a couple of those games, especially the Cowboys game, that might be enough to push the Giants over the top to get the division title, that's why they're going to rest Daniel Jones this week, they'll take the L, and you move on from there as far as the Giants are concerned, uh, they have played incredible, they have played good football, they play hard football. They, there are a lot of games that the Giants should have won this year that they did not. And now they find themselves in a position to, with, a, with control the division right now, to, to take this thing in a year where no one thought they would be able to do that this year. So good for them. We'll see if they can finish it off uh, later in the year. Uh, finally, the Buffalo Bills find themselves 8-3. and three. They're in control of this division. I think Buffalo's probably going to win this division. They took care of the Chargers the other day. Chargers are a bad football team. You take, I think the thing with the Bills is, when I look at them, can Josh Allen can stay consistent? And can this defense, which has gotten torn apart a little bit for a couple of games, uh, the Cardinal game and also the uh, Seahawks game before last week's game against the L.A. Chargers, can they can they get back on track a little bit here? They do have a couple, couple of tough games against the 49ers, who I know aren't very good. They do play the Steelers in a couple weeks. And the Patriots as well. So they got some tough games. Uh, but I think this is all leading to what could be a Week 17 primetime game 
against Miami for the division title. I think Buffalo will probably win the division. They're the best team in the division right now, and they certainly have the best shot at it. I know Miami's played well, but I think Buffalo's probably going to win this division. So they're in position right now, 8-3, and three, to take the AFC East for the first time in a very, I think since 1993, since in a very, very, very long time. So that's where we stand, folks, right now as we are in uh, going into December here in the National Football League. Again, what will the Jets do? We'll have to wait and find out. we got five weeks to go. Ride the way, folks. Ride the tank. Because that's where the Jets are going right now, down to 0-16. And, and maybe better things we'll have to wait and see in the, in the, in the, in the offseason and maybe in the future for that matter. So remember to follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash openmicprogram, at openmicnj on Twitter, and also like and subscribe right here to the Sports Talk Nation right here on YouTube. And we'll talk to you next time. Take care, everybody.